Hey chess fans, this is going to be the first in a series of games of Michael Basman. We've already looked at some of his recent tournament games, but I'd like to go back to when he was playing uh, international chess with some frequency and with some success. This is a game from 1979. It's against Yokanan Afek, an Israeli international master, and of course Basman as black. This game was relatively important for the theory, such as it is, of the St. George defense. And it was also a well-played miniature by Basman. This game is not very well known, but I liked it a lot, and I thought I would share it with you. Okay, so we'll begin with 1e4. Basman has every intention of going into the St. George defense. Now normally, especially when Miles played the St. George, notably in his game against Karpov, he would reply with 1a6 and mount a rapid attack on the white e pawn. But Basman prefers to play 1e6. And the reason for this is he want, first of all wants his opponents to think that he's playing a French before he switches gears on him. But he has another reason too. So white plays d4. And now he can play a6, transposing back into the St. George. And the reason for this move order is if white now plays a4 to stop b5, which is the normal move in the St. George, then black simply plays d5. And a6 is a useful move in for black in the French, whereas a4 is not particularly good. Uh, for white in the French as it weakens the b4 square and often as you know a bishop lands on b4 so anyway this is the reason for his move order it has a slight drawback in that it allows a slightly stronger continuation for white uh, later in the opening uh, but perhaps we'll discuss that when we get to it anyway white continues in normal fashion knight to f3 and b5. And this is the characteristic move of the St. George. This is one of Basman's stronger opening ideas, I think, and I actually played this opening quite a bit at one time, and I actually still do it once in a while. I have other openings that I play, but uh, the St. George, I think, is still a viable opening, and, you know, white can get an advantage in, in several lines, but not an overwhelming advantage. There's also been some new theory developed in recent years. At some point, I may do actually a series of videos on the St. George. Affic plays bishop to d3. Now, already on move four, computers give white a big advantage here, almost a pawn, but you know, Miles and Basman prove that it's not quite so simple. c5 immediately undermining the d-pawn and Affec plays correctly with c3 now bishop to b7 starting to mount some pressure on the e-pawn castles and now knight to f6 now this actually is the reason why we play b5 is so we can play knight to f6 why is that well if white happens to play e5 here then the knight can go to d5 with a nice outpost square there. And because we have this pawn on b5, white cannot kick it away with c4. This is one of the main points of the pawn structure in the early part of the opening. So it's not just a crazy flank attack on the queen's wing, but there is some positional consideration to these moves here. Let's continue on. Queen to e2. Now this move is actually a slight inaccuracy. Um, stronger in this position is rook to e1. Excuse me, not in this position, rather than queen e2. Rook to e1 is a stronger move. Uh, why? Well, you'll actually see a little bit later in this game because Basman manages to exploit this inaccuracy by white. Okay, so let's continue. Queen to e2. And now, knight to c6. Basman continues to play provocatively here. He's inviting both e5 and d5, but of course he actually knows what to do in either of these cases. I believe on one of his cassettes he considered himself 
in this opening to be a matador uh, teasing the tiny white bulls forward. Rather amusing way to put it. Affect falls for the bait. He plays d5. And why wouldn't he? It looks like a good move. And now knight to e7. Now, it's interesting. The computers now say that the white has only a small advantage at this point. And now Affect, totally unaware, continues on with what looks to be a strong move. D6. How many of us wouldn't play D6 as white here? Threatening to put a severe bind on the black position. Of course, Basman has already anticipated all of this. And perhaps uh, Afek was thinking of that example in the first chapter of my system where white shoves his pawns up the board and manages to get a winning bind in a matter of nine or ten moves. But it doesn't work out quite the same here. Okay, so d6, knight to g6 naturally, and in for a penny, in for a pound, he plays e5. And this is a big mistake. Uh, you know, Afek was having a bad tournament. Uh, I think he, he didn't win any games in this tournament. And, uh, and here he's just simply miscalculated. He plays e5, which looks good on the surface, but overlooks a rather simple tactic. I encourage you to find that tactic before I reveal it. It's not hard to see. Okay, yeah, he simply plays bishop takes f3. And now white is forced with a difficult decision. He can take the bishop with the queen, preserving his pawn structure, but losing his e-pawn. Or he can take with the g-pawn and weakening his king position. So he chooses the lesser of the two evils with g takes f3. But had he taken with the queen, he would have gotten something like this. Queen takes f3, knight takes e5, hitting the queen and the knight. Queen to g3, and now... Bishop to d6, the queen can win a pawn here, but of course after g8, h6, then we just win the bishop. So he gets a lousy position. Of course that's not best play, but just to give an example of, of how bad the white position is after queen takes f3. He cannot afford to lose this e-pawn as the upshot of that. So back to the position after bishop takes f3, g takes f3 is definitely the better move. But now black has a large advantage here. And it's instructive to see how Basman puts this game away rather quickly too. Knight to d5, king to h1. So he's getting out of the line of fire on the g-file and, and perhaps uh, hoping to generate some counterplay on the g-file. And now in true hypermodern style, Basman plays f6, undermining the white pawn center. Affect responds with bishop takes g6, h takes g6. But now the h file is open for black pieces. So this is rather a double edged sword here. Queen to d3, putting some pressure on the g pawn, the g6 pawn. Uh, now f4 was probably a better move in this position. Let's just go back. f4 was better than queen to d3. And you'll see why in a minute queen to d3, king to f7, and now rook to g1. Again, f4 was a better move. Why? Because it would have prevented g5, which is what Basman played. He could have probably generated some uh, real counterplay um, had he played this early f4. And now, what would you play as white in this position? White makes a horrendous blunder, a losing blunder, but it's not so obvious to see. So choose choose a move. Uh, you know, he would like to get his position developed. Okay, so if you chose knight to d2, then you're going to fall into the same pit that uh, Affect did in this game. And what you should have played, what Affect should have played, excuse me, is actually probably something like Queen to f1, rather odd looking backwards move. g4, a little pawn sacrifice here. Rook takes g4, f takes e5, b6, 
bishop to e3, bishop to d6, queen to g2, rook to h7, knight to d2, bishop to e7, rook to g1, queen to f8. And, you know, white is down a pawn, but he has actually de generated an initiative and some attacking chances here. So this would have been much better than the game continuation. So let's just go back. So after g5, black plays the horrendous move, knight to d2. Why is it horrendous? Well, I urge you to work that out for yourself. And the game does not last much further than this. Okay, well, if you found bishop d6, then congratulations. This is what Basman played. It's a very nice tactic. The idea is to clear the back rank for the transit of the heavy pieces. White is actually lost from this point. Now here, if white had taken the bishop with e takes d6, he would have run into knight to f4, attacking the queen. And if the queen moves to queen c2, then rook takes h2, check. King takes h2, queen to h8 check. Uh, there's nothing that white can do to stop mate. Queen takes h7, king to g3, queen to h3 is checkmate. He plays f4, trying to break up the pawns and generate some attack, but it's actually already too late because black simply plays knight to f4 and he had to resign because he saw the coming variation he could have played queen to e4 because he, the knight is attacking him but then we would have seen rook takes h2 king takes h2 queen to h8 check king to g3 and queen to h4 is checkmate so after knight takes f4 Affect just threw in the towel. Anyway, very nice game. 17 moves from Basman showing that the St. George is not a joke. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game. We'll have more from time to time, and I hope to see you then. Thank you.